So we are at the January transfer window. There is some wheeling and dealing to be done. It's going to be a tricky one. So the transfer window is now open and we have already made one signing. Not a very expensive signing, but a familiar face. Ray Boyd, the goalkeeper we had at Birmingham City when he was only 18 years old. He was the only goalkeeper we had. We had to play him. We signed him for Leeds all those years later as a backup player. We have now signed him for Nottingham Forest to be a backup player for £86,000. So he comes in and he's far better than the goalkeeper we had on loan from Wolves, Robert Bennett. And I don't know if I can, can't, I can't terminate his loan. That's unfortunate. But uh, he can just sit in the squad and we'll make Ray Boyd our second choice. Now, just to remind you, we had £718,000, 160k available in the wages. So not a lot of room to manoeuvre. And then a few players popped up available to approach. And I want them all. <laughs> so the first of which, which we probably will be able to get over the line should he accept our contract offer, is Christiansen, uh, Christian Morgensen, who will come in and probably be a backup central midfielder to Nakamoto. But he is a fantastic player in his own right, of course. Max Rodriguez, our other backup, got injured for, was it three, six months? Something like that with a broken lower leg. And he still has three months of his injury still to go. So we've made an offer for this boy. There is a couple of other teams who have came in, Lille and Tondela, but I'm hoping he ends up coming to us. I'm going to save these two boys for after. M4, M Kuana, we've made an offer for. Uh, he plays in the South African League, I believe, Super Sport United. He's a fantastic striker. He looks very, very similar, at least to me, to Jamie uh, Coyle. If we take a look there, maybe Jimmy Coyle is a little bit better, well-rounded in pretty much every single area. Mentally, it looks like... Uh, Makuana has maybe the advantage. I might end up withdrawing from this deal. We're offering him 26.5k per week. And I'll show you why I'm withdrawing from that. So the first player we've approached to sign is Eddie Le Chevrier from Club Bruges. Now look at him. He looks absolutely phenomenal. I would like this boy and I'd like him now. And I would probably even change my formation to get somebody like him in. Maybe drop the attacking midfielder in the centre and play two up front. Uh, I would love to bring him in. He's valued at 5 million, which could present as an issue. Um, but if he does accept our contract offer, I'm hoping to be able to raise the funds with some of our backup players to be able to bring this deal over the line. I would imagine they would want 5 million to bring him in now. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see if he does agree a deal. And this other lad is even better. <laughs> Gorka Calvo. I mean, he is absolutely superb. And again, if we were to bring him in, I would change my formation to play a two-striker formation. We've already got the likes of Florian, who could play as back up alongside Dabanovic. And he is... Um now, he's valued at 15 million. It's highly unlikely I'm going to be able to raise that sort of funding to bring him in now. So that might mean I might just need to withdraw from this deal. Because even though I would love to be able to bring him into Nottingham Forest in the future, it would probably have an effect on the available wage budget. And... We need every single penny we can get. If he accepts my offer, uh, there's no other club currently interested. As you can see, Chelsea, PSG and uh, Benfica, the other clubs who are interested. I might just have to wait it out till the end of the window, try and raise as much money as possible and then look to bring him in. But as you can see, two strikers. Um, <laughs> we could try and sell Dabanovic. We could try and sell Florian. Um, if... <laughs> I just need to see if they accept our contract offers and then make my decision based on that. But that's what we've been doing so far. Obviously, funding is incredibly limited. I would love to try and find a right back, try and find a left back. Uh, that would probably be my main areas of concern. But if we can't, and none of them are available in terms of approaches right now, well, there is one. Emmanuel Cassiotti I would like to approach from PSV. I think he would come in and probably be our start and left back. Um, purely down to his physicals. Uh, we re require heavily on a very fast defensive line as we play quite high up the pitch. And uh, I would like to maybe look to bring him in. But I can't even approach to sign him right now because I've got a lot of this wage budget tied up in other offers. And the board won't let me do it. So he will be someone who I approach to sign a little bit later on. Um, yeah. There's a lot of big signings we could make. It all just comes down to finances. And I'm absolutely raging that the board are being pretty tight. They've already came to me and offered me to be able to adjust the season expectations to increase the transfer and wage budget. I picked the highest offer to be able to increase our wage budget because none of them increased our transfer budget. 
So we now have our 895k wage budget available and uh, we're going to try and make good use of that. In terms of today's episode then of course you know what's coming. We've got all the games to play in January. We will fly through them. The first of which is a home tie against Huddersfield in the league. They've already beat us twice this season. Once in the league and once in the cup. So I'm hoping for a little bit of revenge there. But uh, it's going to be an interesting transfer window. We'll have to wait and see what happens. So we've exacted our revenge against Huddersfield. Back in league action, Naka, Nakamoto and Adam Lewis with the brace giving us a 3-0 home win. That was satisfying. This is what I've had to resort to to try and raise some funds. Keith Keeley is leaving for 89k to join Braga. See you later, mate. And Jason Cyrus has left to join Hull City for £220,000. We are raking in the cash right now. So we've just played Southend in the FA Cup third round and won 2-0 away from home. Florian playing on the right hand side, got himself a brace and we are safely through until the next round. Oh, they've both accepted me offers. Eddie Le Chavre has accepted a 60k per week contract and Gorka Calvo has also accepted the contract. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? Do I accept them both? Do I only accept one? Screw it, I'm accepting them both. I'm going to try my damned hardest let's see how much money we need we need to bring in to bring them both in <laughs> oh got a calvo deal falls through because apparently we cannot afford the deal ah oh, absolute nightmare right well there's one uh i mean i would have loved to bring this boy in but he was the one who was most ambitious uh christian morganson accepted the offer we do have enough in the transfer budget to make that happen um We'll have to have a look to see how much we will have to pay to sign both of these boys right now. So Eddie Le Chavre would have to pay £6 million. Are you kidding me? It's only valued at 5 Right, so £6 million. We need to raise that. Christian Morganson, how much do we have to pay for him? 550 k That shouldn't be <laughs> with our 57 k budget. That shouldn't really be a problem. Let's, uh, let's get Christian Morganson in. He looks like a pretty tasty player. And uh, being able to bring him in off, off the bench just gives us that real strength and depth that we've been lacking so far this season. Um, and it also gives Nakamoto a chance to actually rest his legs every now and then. So I've been looking through my backup players and Florian is highly, highly valued. Now there's no chance we're getting nineteen and a half million pounds for him. But I am going to offer him out. I'm going to try and sell him to be able to bring in the Belgian uh, striker and that will replace him in the squad entirely. It'll keep our foreign player limit in a happy little medium. And if we can get some decent money for Florian. Oh, got offers in already. Oh, Dynamo. Go on. Oh, they want us to pay some of his wages. I'm going to stall on that Dynamo bid. We're going to hold it. And I, I would rather have like 15 million just straight up. So we're going to offer him back out again. And we're going to see if we can get 16 mil straight up. No qualms, no issues, no wages or in installments. Let's see if anybody else comes in. Right, Bristol City come in with a £9.5 million offer. We're going to accept that uh, offer from Dynamo and hope that Florian will accept the contract. That is the major issue we've got. If he does accept it, we're getting pretty much £40 million into the bank. How much are we getting again? We're getting 90%, so let's say it's what? £12.5 million we'll end up getting. Uh, £6 million will bring in the Belgian. And then we've got £6 million to play with in other areas, namely wing-backs. Uh, still a huge challenge, but... Uh, Hopefully this deal goes through. And he is just a little bit... Uh, if your player who you really want to leave the club, make sure you change his agreed playing time because sometimes they, re they reject the contracts whereas it's m they're more likely to accept if they are surplus to requirements. So making sure that his squad player status is actually what you want it to be. Now with... Uh, with them deals coming through or falling through, we can now actually approach to sign Cassiotti, the left back from PSV. If we do end up signing him, I will be tempted to try and sell Lucas Pinter, our current starting left back. Uh, although Lucas Pinter is definitely maybe a bit more well-rounded. I'm being a fool, aren't I? Lucas Pinter is just a better player. It's literally just the pace. That's my only concern with Lucas Pinter. Um, plus with him valued at six and a half million, he's currently unhappy because I didn't give him a new contract. Yeah, that will be a bad deal. I'm not doing that just for the sake of doing it. I think I'm going to try and make a loan offer for Ahmet Yardamisi. This is him compared to Harewood. Uh, I think he much, much more well-rounded in the attacking sense. Uh, decent physicals as well on the boy. 
we got these polygons as well there. How would looks like physical? Oh. See, these are all like sort of side grids. And I really need to find a right back who just jumps out and says, "Sign me right now." But uh, it's I'm not quite finding them. Well, I am finding them. It's just it's the like. So this lad now he is wanted on loan. So I'm assuming he's not getting that much game time for Borussia Dortmund. How much would they want to loan him out? They'd want his wages paying. Well, that would be pretty much it. If I could bring him in, I'll be very happy. We're going to have to wait and see if this Florian deal goes through. That is the major key issue now. He's another fee coming in. Lewis Rothery leaving for 275k. We are rolling in the door. So today's matches must be all about revenge. Nottingham Forest 3, Birmingham 2. Marcus Leonardo still causing us all sorts of problems. Get the brace for the brum. But Christian Morgensen and Marcus Marco Antonio with a 93rd minute winner. Absolutely fantastic result. So, Alez Debanovic is kicking up before Spout not starting enough game time, which is fair enough, he's not. He's worth 10 million. <laughs> I'm going to offer him out for 15. Let's see if we get any biters. So, we have received an offer for Alez Debanovic. 9.75 million start, rising to 13.5. Uh, I will accept this offer from Antwerp. Now, whether he will join them or not is another matter, but I'm certainly hoping he will. Because that would, again, give us another little bit of cash in Jackson. Jan in his leaving. Thank God for that. He's signing for Dynamo. We will be receiving £12 million in the transfer budget. Which means we can now confirm the signing of the Belgian striker. And I might even see if that other guy's signed a new deal with somebody else or not. So £5.75 will be spent on Eddie Le Chavre. He comes in. And probably I will start and striker now over Coil. Uh... Again, if we get another striker, I might end up playing a two-striker formation, but he's definitely a big upgrade. And although Coyle started the season absolutely electrically, he's now only got 10 goals in 21 games. Um, his recent form has been absolutely dire. If we can see here, he's his games previously. One goal in the previous God knows how many games. So, uh, yeah, definitely needed an upgrade there. And we have definitely got it with our new boy. Right. Gorka Calvo hasn't agreed a deal with any other club as of yet. Let's see if we can get a deal over the line for this lad. We can't. He rejected the contract offer. We can go back in. We can try again maybe in a week's time. <laughs> I mean, it's completely unnecessary. I really shouldn't be doing this. I should be going for areas of the pitch that we can do with an improvement. But he's so good and I want him dearly. Right, so we're starting to have some real concerns with our defence without Fukushima in it. We've just been absolutely battered by Southampton away from home, 5-0. Ian Chapman getting his revenge against us, our former player. And um, this was probably the worst game I've been in charge with, with Nottingham Forest. Yeah, that's how bad the Southampton result was. The boys have had to refund the fans. <laughs> Here is going to be our starting right back for the rest of the season, Adewalde Opara. Is going to join us on loan from Borussia Dortmund. 61k per week wages wasn't something I was particularly delighted about. But he is definitely an upgrade on Howard. And uh, hopefully will help stabilise our defence just a little bit better. So we've just went away from home and beat Leicester City 2-1. They did go down to 10 men, 59 minutes in. But we were already 2-1 up at that point. Nakamoto and Walker with the goals. Nice to bounce back from that Southampton result with an away win. And there we have it then, Alas Dabanovic will be leaving, we will be getting £9 million from his uh, potentially £13.5 million transfer to play with in this budget. Can we sign that strike? <laughs> I'm wasting so much time trying to sign this striker, but I really, really want them. And uh, I've had a look for left-backs, centre-backs, uh, and there's nothing really on the market in our sort of price range. So um, we're going to try again for that striker. We have a contract agreed. 86 k per week. Um, <laughs> I've offered him some ridiculous bonuses. I would never have ever have done that if I was staying at Bar uh, Barnsley, at Nottingham Forest beyond this season. But if he agrees the deal, would probably be would we be able to bring this boy over the line? We'll have to wait and see how much the club would want us to pay to be able to bring him in. We have fourteen million. What was his value these days? It's went down to thirteen point two five. Maybe just maybe. We might, if we're lucky, be able to get him in before the January transfer windows. And it might it might be all for nothing. We might end up changing to a two-striker formation and then completely collapsing. 
Which, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it's highly likely to happen. But I just, he's just too good. I want him in my squad. I want to play with him for the final six months. I want to see if I can get the best out of him and the new Belgian that we've just signed. Right, I decided to try and sell Yannick Millot as we did sign a new right back. So he's no longer required. Leeds and Brentford have both come in with a £5 million straight offer, which I am going to accept. That'll just help going into the fund to be able to bring in Gorka Calvo. Come on, boys. it might. Um, this might end up happening. So we've just played Bristol City away from home in the FA Cup 4th round. Fully rotated side, 1-3-0. Abdullahi Garber, Jamie Coyle and Adam Lewis. So now we're final game of the January transfer period. is a one all draw at home against Brentford. A bit of a disappointing one. Boys didn't play particularly well. Nakamoto with the only goal. So there's only a couple of days left of the January transfer window. We need to see if this boy's going to accept our contract offer. And if it's even going to be... A remote possibility that we can bring him in during this window. A lot of a lot of work still to do in these last 48 hours. Right, here's the two deals that were still on the table. Yannick Millot has leaving us for £5 million. Who did he end up joining? Was it Leeds? He has joined Leeds. And Gorka Calvo has accepted our contract offer. Now, how much are they wanting to bring him in now? Please say it is an option. He's valued at 12.75. They want an 11.5. We have 18 million. We are bringing him in now. The the absolute saga of it. And he does join us on the final day of the transfer window. I could not be happier. And there he is in all of his glory. A four star, five star. Automatically goes to 39 and a half million pound value. He is the highest played player at the club. And he does have a match highest earner clause in his contract. So he will remain the highest earner at the club. Uh, in terms of what I'm thinking, I'm thinking something like this. Um, maybe with, I'm not really sure how I'm actually going to work it. We are going to play two strikers. We're going to play this Le Chavre and Gorka. We've got um, what's his face, Coyle as backup. Um, we've still got PS to be able to play in the attacker midfield role should we need to change it, which means there's probably no room for Abdullahi Garba to remain at the club. So I'm going to try and move him on before the uh, January transfer window ends. We'll wait and see if anything comes from that. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't though. And uh, our squad is complete. This will be the final squad we have with, had with Nottingham Forest. Uh, it's a little bit of a smash and grab in terms of how the squad's actually forming. We're playing two strikers now, which we haven't done for a long time. Uh, it's not guaranteed to work. We might have just ruined our season. But at the very least, it'll be an interesting experiment. We've signed two fantastic players for Nottingham Forest, so whoever the next manager is has an absolute dream striker partnership should they be able to get it working. And for the years to come, whether they sell them, whether they keep them, they've got themselves two really, really top quality assets. So um, although we might end up ruining our season just a little bit, we have definitely set Nottingham Forest up for the good stuff in the long run. So in terms of today's episode then, it looks like we're getting ten and a half million pounds for Garber, so from standard that'd be fantastic. I'm not going to spend any of that money at this point. Um, we are just going to chill out and move on. Liverpool next be an absolute huge game. They smash us every single time. In terms of when we return, though, it'll probably be around here, the Norwich Watford game, uh, with then the view of finishing off the season with Aston Villa and Wolves. But anyway, lads. We made our signings. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.